Hi, in this video I'll show you how to find the largest and smallest values based on a criteria. I've got some options here. We're going to look for highest and low scores and the second highest and low scores. That's another example. And if we've got some other criteria that are more specific, let's say we have this drop down for male, female, and this drop down for the make of the car. And those we can use that to um, have inputs into our high and low scores based on these various uh, parameters or criteria. Uh, if you're interested, at the end of the video, I'll cover how to create these drop-downs. So that'll be something maybe later at the end. But see, with, with this, we can use the criteria here. And in addition to, to those criteria, we can also use logical operators, the greater than or less than, and I'll show that over here in this section. So let's start off with the highest score. So with the highest score, if you're already familiar, you can use the max function. The max function, let me tab that. I'll look for all the scores here. See F, F to F uh, two to F twenty six, press enter, and we have our high score, which is hundred right here. That's the highest score. Now all I need to do is just uh, bring that Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and one thing you'll notice too, if I didn't set my absolute cell reference, meaning that I didn't have the dollar signs in front of the F two F six, when I copied that down, it offset it. F3 to F27. So that's what happens when you copy it. So press the F4 key here to put the dollar signs in front of the F3, F, F3, and also put a F, use the F4 key to put the dollar signs in front of there. So that makes it an absolute cell reference. So when I copy it down later on or I make any copies, it will stay the same, right? So I should have done it on this one. Let me show you F4 here and then F4 here. Press enter delete this entry and go here and just bring it down to copy down and now you notice that it stays the same. Now with the lowest score we just use the opposite of the max function which is the min function. MIN press enter and the minimum amount is 52 right over here. How about the second higher score? That we can use another function it's called large. LARG actually what I can do since I've got this here, let me just bring it down. Since I want to keep that entry here, and I'll just change this to large. LARG, click on that, and it takes two arguments. So I need to have a comma. That K is the order. So one would be the first one. If I press one, that's going to be the first, the highest one, which was 100. But if I put two, it's going to be the second highest, which and 97 is the second highest here. Yep, right there at the bottom. And if we want to do it for our second lower scores, all I'm going to do is just copy that formula down. Since I got my dollar signs in front of them, I have absolute cell, ref or absolute cell reference. Instead of using large, the smallest one, the lowest score, I'm going to use the small function. And since I've got the second two there, that's going to be our second lowest score, which is going to be 56. So that will be somewhere around here, right? 56 over here. Now, as I mentioned before, if we wanted to find out using multiple criteria, we would have to use something called the max if functions for the high score. And the low score would be the min ifs function, IFS. I'll type equal max ifs, click on that. It's going to take uh, at least two arguments. My range that I want to bring back from, which is our, my score range, right? Let me select that again and make sure that I have press the F4 key. And when I press F4, it will automatically put the absolute cell references for the range here, F2 to F26. Now, what is my criteria range? So my criteria range, the first criteria, I'm going to select the gender column. So it's going to be B2 all the way down to B26 press F4, and those are absolute cell references now. So with that criteria range, what criteria I'm going to use? I'm going to select my criteria drop down here. So that's going to be I. I also need to press F4 because when I copy it down to the cell below to the lowest score section, I don't want that to change either. Comma, what's my second criteria? Well, my second criteria is the make of the car, right? So again, go to make, C2, scroll all the way down here and then F4 to lock that in. 
comma, what's my criteria? It's going to be cell uh, J20, J8 here. And then, of course, F4 to lock that in. And close parentheses, press Enter, and it brought back nothing. So why did it do that? As you can see, there's only two Pontiac entries here. This one and three, and this one and row 10. And after that, that was it. So if I change this to male, I should get an entry back for uh, 60, or excuse me, 83. So I change it to male, then I got 83, and that's what happened. All right, so there's the criteria for the highest. Now the one for the lows, I'm just gonna copy that down and change that max if to min ifs, and it will give me the minimum. M-I-N, press enter, and the minimum for the male Pontiac, since there's only two to choose from, it's gonna give me 60. So that's how we can use multiple crit criteria. Now, in addition to the criteria, we can use logical operators if it's higher or lower than. So I'm gonna use the start and dates here. Now I'm gonna show you how we can do it by putting those dates within the formula and and see what kind of pitfall might happen when we do that. So let's just do the high score. I'm gonna do max, ifs, press tab to open parentheses. What's my range? I wanna bring back my scores. Select my scores here. And I'm not gonna press F4 because this is the only entry I've got here. So I'm not gonna worry about copying, pasting it. And with that in mind, what's my criteria range? Let's work with our Pontiac entry since we know there's only two here. So it'll be easier to find out if there's any errors. Let's say that I wanted to use um, my criteria range here. And that needs to have that criteria Pontiac. I can go up here and, and select it, but I can also put it in here in the entry. So I just have to put it in the quotes, Pontiac, right? And if I left it as is, it's gonna bring back 83, right? Because 83 out of those two is the highest one. But let's bring back some dates, right? Let's bring back some dates. Let's say that my criterion range, my begin date, I can select that. That, that would be my first criteria. And let's say that I wanna have something that is, let's see, we have Ponte. We don't want it to bring back the max, which was 83, right? So we wanna bring back the max that was 60. So the criteria for the date, we can say, maybe it's greater than um, January 1st, this entry right here. So what we can do here is we need to put the greater than in quotes. So it has to be greater than in quotes and ampersand. So we're gonna join it. It's greater than that, right? Close parentheses, press enter. Oh, uh, oops, it brought back 83 because the date here, 112, 2019 is greater than this one, 111, 2019. Let's change that to 13. If I've changed it to 13, then it's going to bring back 60, which is correct because that date is greater than uh, January 13th, and that's why it brought back 60. So as I mentioned before, there's a caveat to this in entering dates. Let me copy this, control C to copy, press escape. If I didn't reference 60 here, if I just said, if I said, uh, if I said command V, control V to put that in, if I reference the date here, it's not gonna work. It's gonna, it won't work correctly, right? But I think if I put it in quotes, let's see, Excel might be smart enough to recognize it, yes and then it brought it back correctly. So there's the various ways that we can use criteria to get our smallest and largest values. Now, I also mentioned before that I can show you how these drop downs are created, and it's actually fairly easy. All I need to do is, if I want to create a drop down like that one, where only there's two entries, there's not that much typing. This is a data validation list, so I'll just go under data and go to my data validation, click on that, allow, click on list, and here I'll just type out the two entries. It's either going to be a male or female. Click OK, and now I have my drop down, male or female. 
With the other drop-down, it's a little bit more challenging because we have more than one, more than two entries. Maybe three or four is easy, easy to type in, but if you've got quite a few, you don't want to type in all of those. So we need to take that and put it into a column. I already have a column here, and we have our 14 uh, makes here. And what I need to do is make sure that this is a named range. This range is named. I'll just copy this because I already named this one earlier. I'll put it over here and I'll paste just the values. So hopefully I don't paste the name range there too. And this doesn't have a name range. You can see if I select this over here, there's a name here. But if I select this, there's no name. So, And I'll just call this one make two, the second one. All right. And so I've named this range now. All I need to do is do the same thing I did earlier. Go under data, go under validation, data validation, and this is also a list. And I'll just type equal make two. Click OK. And now I've got a list I can choose from. So that's how we can make those drop down lists. Now that's just the extra bonus here. But this video was on how to find large and small values based on some criteria. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.